David said, I cannot get away from you. He said, if I sin, you're there. And if I'm good, you're there. If I do right, you're there. If I do wrong, you're there. He said, there is nowhere I can go and flee from your spirit. That's why you don't have to be in church to call on him because he's everywhere. You can be in a bathroom. Come on. You can call on the name of the Lord while you're in the checkout line at Target. You can call on the name of the Lord when the car in front of you cuts you off. You can call on the, you can, Jesus said, call on me and I'll show you grace and mighty things which thou knowest not. He is everywhere. Guys in the back, if you would, help me out Psalm 139. So open your Bible, your Bible app, however you get there. <clears throat> if you can, read along with me. It'll be on the screens. Talking about heavenly chaos. This is our journey through praise and worship and helping us to understand that the things going on in the room are not the only things going on. There's more going on when you praise and worship God that you can't see than in the room that you can see. David said, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed, listen, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell to the othermost parts of the sea, next verse, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Lord, bless your word in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. We talk a lot, and we shout a lot, and we talk to each other at this church. So tell your neighbor on both sides, say, here we go, here we go, here we go. Matthew 18. I want to compare and contrast these two scriptures. This is Jesus, Psalms that was David, 700 years before Jesus, king of Israel, who wrote most of the 150 Psalms which are the praise and worship songs of the Bible, of which many of our songs even today are still written out of those, okay? <clears throat> Jesus, 700 years later, David said, I can't go anywhere and you're not there. Jesus said this, he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. That is two different kind of theirs. Now I want to compare and contrast them, okay? There are three defining characteristics that make God, God. Okay? They're kind of theological words. It ain't something you gotta, you know, you're gonna be saying every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but it'd be helpful for you to know. One of them is omniscience. God is omniscient. Omni means all. Science means knowing. God knows everything. God doesn't forget. God doesn't learn. God doesn't get better. God doesn't recall because there's nothing he's ever forgotten. Okay? The next is one called omnipotent. Omni meaning all potent mean power or the root word of potential. All potential lies in God. If you are going to reach your potential, you got to understand that all potential lies in God. It is impossible for someone to fully possess everything that they're supposed to be and everything they're supposed to do outside of God's help. So even people with great accomplishments, if they didn't know God, they may have gotten further than others, but they fell far short of their potential. Number three is the one I want to bog down in. He's omnipresent. God is everywhere at the same time. David said, I can go to heaven. He said, I can get on the wings of the morning. He said, I can make my bed, and the actual Hebrew word is Sheol, which also is a word for hell. He said, I can make my bed in hell. He said, and I cannot get away from you. It's amazing they used to talk about people running from God. Well, how are you gonna run from somebody that's everywhere? Because he was in the place you left, and wherever you run to, he's there waiting for you. 
So there's no running. God, David said, I cannot get away from you. He said, if I sin, you're there. And if I'm good, you're there. If I do right, you're there. If I do wrong, you're there. He said, there is nowhere I can go and flee from your spirit. And we call this the omnipresence of God. That's why you don't have to be in church to call on him because he's everywhere. You can be in a bathroom. Come on. You can be throwing up somewhere and say, God, get these drugs out of my system. You can call on the name of the Lord while you're in the checkout line at Target. You can call on the name of the Lord when the car in front of you cuts you off. You can call on the, you can, Jesus said, call on me and I'll show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. Now, we got omnipresent, but Jesus takes it deeper. He said, I like to show up in a special way when my people gather. That's not omnipresence. That's manifest presence. Manifest presence is when God will literally come and inhabit a room. I am not here to criticize everybody and say everybody's doing wrong and we got it right. But what I am trying to expose is you don't have to do anything for the omnipresence of God. Okay? But the manifest presence of God has a pattern. And we do not experience that manifest presence because those patterns are ignored. To everything, God, there is a way. Jesus said there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. So you can do marriage your way, and the beginning is not destruction. The end. He said, if you do things your way, it may start good, it may sustain a while. He said, but in the end, the thing's going to deteriorate and collapse. He said, but my way is the narrow way. You see what I'm talking about? So God has a pattern. Like I said, we can call it keys, we can call it a pattern, but to everything God wants to give you, there is a way. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the way the whole Bible works, from Genesis to Revelation, I'm, 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 giving, you, I'm giving you stuff people don't talk about. God gives the pattern the people obey the pattern and God rewards it with glory. God gives the pattern. When the pattern is obeyed, he rewards it with glory. Go home today and read Deuteronomy 20. If you hearken to the voice of the Lord this day to observe and do all these things I command you, then all these blessings shall fall upon you. Read on down to about verse 20. If you do not hearken to the voice of the Lord this day to do all these things which I have commanded you this day, then all these curses shall follow you. Nothing curses you from the outside. So God pulls them out of Egypt. They're in sand. They have no judicial system. They have no moral code. They have no police. They have no economic system. They have no structure. Three million, 3.5 million, some philosophers say, standing in a desert. They needed God for everything. So God gave them 10 commandments, a moral code. What is he doing? He's starting to reveal something about himself. And then he wants to meet with them. Whew. It's a love story. He, he wants to be with them. He brought them out so he could be with them. And so he said, build me a tabernacle. How dare God take a bunch of slaves and say, take up an offering. God said, bring me these items. He told them that and said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build me a tabernacle so I can meet with thee. 
He told them the skins. He told them the animal type skins. He told them the dye, that they were to dye the skins. He told them the dimensions. He told them the size. He told them the architectural layout and on and on and so forth and so forth. And the Bible says, read this, and Israel did exactly as the Lord commanded, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Oh, what's happening here? Something's happening. So now God says, I want you to make me a place where I can come and my presence can sit. We're going to make the Ark of the Covenant. So God told him the size. God told him the dimensions. God told him the materials. God told him the overlay. God said, I want two cherubim overseeing the mercy seat bent over with beaten gold. And I want the mercy seat set in the middle inside of the Ark. I want the tablets of stone. I want Aaron's rod that budded. I want some manna that dropped out of heaven, put it inside the Ark. And the Bible says they did exactly as the Lord commanded. And the presence of God came and sat on the mercy seat. Oh, we own to something. Then that David said, Lord, I'm living in a palace and you're still in a tent back that we built for you years ago. He said, I want to build you a palace. God said, you got too much blood on your hands because David was a man of war. He said, but you take up the offering from Israel and your son can build it. Solomon came and built the temple of God and the Bible says they, that he gave them the size. He gave them the dimensions. He gave them the materials. He architecturally drew it out. The Israelites did exactly as the Lord commanded. Listen, and the Bible says that the glory of God came and the priest could not even walk in the building of performed their duty because the raw glory of God was so strong the preachers could not even go in there and preach. My God, I'd love to see a service where the power of God is so strong I ain't even got to come in the building. God wants you to be further along than you are? In this series, Heavenly Chaos from Ron Carpenter, you'll learn that your praise is the key to getting you there. I want you to look at my life and I can be in the midst of hell and something is about to happen. Something is about to turn around. You can't see it, but don't let what you see confuse you because you don't know the sound that I've been making. And my life is not what you see. My life is where I'm saying. Ah! This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Isn't God good? I, I tell you every week, I never tire of the Word of God. Uh, every moment that I'm in it preparing. He's changing me before I even get to take these things and bring them to you. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the keys of the kingdom that let me access a life that is far beyond this world, but I can bring heaven into the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I hope that you're enjoying this word. We're gonna get right back to it in just a moment and we're gonna finish it out. But I just need to take a moment to do a couple of things to make some people aware of where we are and then take some of you and just say a great big thank you. This is the time where we thank everyone who has been giving to this. I tell you, we never show ads. You don't ever see us doing commercials. We didn't roll away and show you Coca-Cola or Verizon or at and We didn't go away to any of that. Why? Because we believe that Jesus Christ is the greatest cause in the earth. And those other companies, you know what? They'll spend any amount of money because they believe in what they're telling people. They believe in their product. I want to tell you something. I believe in Jesus. And for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. I believe the answer to everything in the world is Jesus Christ. And so I want to get that answer to every person I can. And right now we're doing it in 149 countries and many of you for weeks, months, 
years, a few of you for decades, have helped us on whatever level you've helped us. Some with one-time gifts here and there, others becoming monthly partners have helped us do what we do. From my heart to your heart, thank you. But we always want to expand our circle. We always want to open it up to you. Have you been blessed? Have you been touched? Bless the thing that has blessed you. Have you been strengthened? Strengthen the thing that has strengthened you. Have you been increased? Increase the thing that has increased you. Turn around and reciprocate that blessing back. Would you con consider that one-time gift or becoming a covenant partner with Ron Carpenter Television as we continue to do everything we can to put the gospel of Jesus and his kingdom on every TV set we can in the world? That's our goal. Help us get there. So many need to hear. So many need to know. And for your first time or first month's gift of any size, this is our gift to you to say thank you and that we do not take it for granted. We know you believe in Jesus and we want you to believe that we are doing everything we can to get Jesus out of here, into there, into the world. God bless you as you give. Now let's get back to the message. But to everything there was a pattern given to everything, the pattern was obeyed. And then the manifest presence of God, not the omniscient God, not the omnipresent God, not the, omnip the manifest in your midst God. Just because we're having music does not mean we're having presence. Fact is, I kind of like our music. But what you don't know is, it's just like the materials had to be assembled for the presence of God in the tabernacle. And the materials had to be assembled for the presence of God in the Ark of the Covenant. And the, pres and the materials had to be assembled to build the temple which the Lord set up his glory. I've been trying to assemble the pieces. Because you can't just woke up in God's face. <laughs> there is a pattern to the presence of God. In the presence, of, why do we want that, Pastor? In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy, and at his right hand pleasures forevermore. Now, how many of you would love your life to be baptized in the fullness of joy and pleasures that chase you down in the street and tickle you like a kid? That comes in the presence of the Lord. And we have good people who love Jesus and passionate worshipers, but there's no glory because glory is where people's lives are affected and changed forever and things happen that they do not understand. And that's where I believe God is going to set up a church through us that are going to turn the eyes because they're going to say, I want what's happening in that room to happen in this room because if you ever taste God on that level, religion will never satisfy you again. It will never, just doing church and everything. Now, <clears throat> what is glory? Okay, you got to understand, I'm going to give you in about four minutes something that I preached one year on. 2016-ish, I think, 17, I preached 52 Sundays on the word glory. One word. So it's hard to wrap it up in five or six minutes. But that's not really my focus. It's a byproduct of where we're trying to go. Glory. The Bible says that God crowned Adam with glory and honor. God does not wear clothes like we wear clothes. God is a as a reign in glory and in honor. When God made his son, Adam, out of himself, Psalm 8 says, and he crowned him with glory and honor and put all the works of his hands under his feet. So God made it and gave Adam the power to run it. The word glory means weight, 
and authority. Pattern, obedience, glory. Pattern, obedience, glory. God gives the pattern, the people obey, and God then backs his people up with his authority and his weight. His weight. <clears throat> the Bible says that whatever Adam called it, that's what it was. I think that's really funny because Adam was God's last creation, which means everything walked around five days and didn't know what it was. Can you see the lion walking up to the sheep? Hey, are we friends? Do I like eat you? I don't know what's going on. And Adam comes along, you're a lion, you're a lamb, you're a leopard, you're a giraffe, you're a cedar tree, you're a palm tree, you're a pine tree. You're whatever Adam called it because all of it was put under his authority. So when Adam would speak, he was crowned with glory, which means he would talk and heaven would back up what he said. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? Now, I ain't getting many claps. Are y'all staying with me? Are you uh, get, make sure you with Because I'm after something here. I'm after something that can separate us and make us be different and make us be a leader amongst God's people. And that's what I want us to be. Okay? We got great music. We got great worship. And these people love God. We're not talking about any of that. We're talking about being after the manifest presence of God. Okay? Now, to everything, there's a way. There's a way to peace, there's a way to blessing, there's a way to favor, okay? There's a way to a pure heart. To everything God has a pattern, he will give you the pattern in his word and then he will let you obey that pattern. Then reward comes after obedience. So obedience is the master key to all things. You just need to obey. God takes care of the rest. Can I go deeper? Jesus is a king. A king has courts. You can go to Buckingham Palace and never see the royal family. Because to see the royal family, you have to go through a series of courts. And the courts of the king is his private, personal, protected atmosphere. To get in the presence of Jesus, you are trying to enter his personal space. Yeah. Oh, that's so thick. And David always talked about these courts. What are we missing? Isaiah even talked about, the prophet said, the priests were trampling on the courts of God. In other words, he's saying, you're disregarding all of God's protocols and God's not going to meet with you. You just don't walk in on a king. And the courts are a progression. And what do you do in the courts to progress? I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I'll enter his courts with praise. All of our churches today skip praise, cut all the lights off, make it pitch dark, and worship. You can't. You can't. Let me tell you why they skip praise, because praise is foolishness. And we're so cultured, and we're so prim, and we're so proper, and we got so many accomplishments, and we're so educated that it's too foolish for me to dance around and clap my hands and shout. Old and honest. It's foolishness. So get me straight to the thing where I can put one hand on my latte and the other one. <laughs> that fits me. Well, you can worship as it's fitting to you and never have the manifest presence. God will allow that. God will allow that. But if you want his presence, where there's the fullness of joy and his right hand pleasures forevermore, you have to do it his way. Let me, let me tell you how powerful this is. David said, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. He said, I can go see a thousand doctors or I can get in your presence one time. 
He said, I can go to a thousand rehabs and therapists, or I can get in your presence one day. Oh, I'm about to preach this thing right here. Better is one day, one day in your court than a thousand other elsewheres. Stand on your feet with me if you would all over this building. Hug three people and say, I'm going. Come on, tell them. I'm going. I'm going. Hallelujah. You know what? I'm standing here with my wife, Hope, and I'm going to let her tell you something amazing that's happening. But before we do, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Pastor, it can't be that easy. It is it that is. easy. He said, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. It goes like this, Lord. I believe you died and rose from my sins. I ask you to forgive me this day. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I ask you to cleanse me and wash me and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you put your faith in him and prayed that prayer, I need you to write us, email us, direct message us. You got to do something to let us know that you made that decision because it is the best decision you ever made for this life yeah. and for eternity. God bless you in your new journey as you walk with Jesus. And who? you got something really exciting happening. Tell everybody. Absolutely, and especially to those of you who just gave your life to Jesus. You know, it's a common misconception that once you get saved, that rainbows just pop out over your life and tulips <laughs> pop out all over your path and nothing bad happens. And that is just not true. You've it's just engaged in the fight of your life. And I am here to tell you by my new book, if you don't fight, then you don't win. That is how you become great, one battle at a time. Listen, this book will teach you how to change your defeatist mindset, ooh, ooh. how to overcome adversity. Listen, it'll teach you how to harness life's pressure so that they work for you not and against not you. against you. I want to get this in the hand of every believer. Just go to Hope's Inner Circle, H-O-P-E-S, Inner Circle, Dot com. You can get a free copy today. Yes, you can, very just free to mm -hmm. your house when you join the Inner Circle or you can just buy the book. I want it to bless you. I want to be a part of your life and I know that this right here needs to be a part of everybody's library. Check this out. She's a profound and prolific writer. I've even been impressed myself. And look, until next time, we love you here at Ron Carpenter Television and we hope we get to see you real soon. See, some of you, some seasons that God already wanted you to have exited, your mouth is keeping you in it. Where is it you want to go? You got to begin to put a sound in the atmosphere, and then your life will begin to follow the sound you make. Do you feel like God wants you to be further along than you are? In this series, Heavenly Chaos from Ron Carpenter, you'll learn that your praise is the key to getting you there. I want you to look at my life, and I can be in the midst of hell, and something is about to happen. Something is about to turn up. You can't see it, but don't let what you see confuse you because you don't know the sound that I've been making. And my life is not what you see. My life is where I'm saying ah! This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.